Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> and welcome to the Koch Institute. <clears throat> I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I, for one, am very excited to be here tonight. Although this project uh, proceeded at record pace, uh, thanks in large part to the prodding and cajoling of David Koch, nevertheless, uh, I've been waiting for this evening to come for a very, very long time. On behalf of my MIT colleagues, I want to thank you for braving the cold of an early March evening in Cambridge, and it, and it really is cold out there. I hope you're warm enough in here. There will be a lot of hot air emanating from this podium shortly. <laughs> Uh, but it's great of you to be here uh, and to celebrate with us. I'm going to keep my remarks short. We got a late start, but I do want to reflect uh, on the journey that we've taken to get to this point, the opportunities that are afforded to us now that we're here, and also to thank some folks who've helped us along the way. The Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research and the fantastic facility to my left houses uh, a unique entity, but one that grew out of an existing facility here on the MIT campus, the MIT Center for Cancer Research, and the groundbreaking work that my colleagues have done there to help define in quite ex exquisite detail the intricate workings of cancer cells, to define the differences between cellular normalcy and malignancy. Remarkable progress, which was contributed to by so many, Salvador Loria, Bob Weinberg, Nancy Hopkins, Richard Hines, Angelica Ammon, Phil Sharp, to name just a few. The emergence of this molecular blueprint of cancer is at once exhilarating and also frustrating to those of us on the front lines. Exhilarating because the strides that we have made have allowed us to be much more audacious in thinking about what is possible in all areas of cancer research, from the ways we detect and monitor cancer to how we treat and prevent it. Frustrating because we now have also developed a keen understanding of just how complex and how challenging the problems of cancer really are. At the same time, we have witnessed the limits of our traditional approaches. Just because we can see a problem and understand a problem in new ways does not mean that we can necessarily intervene and fix the problem. And at a place like MIT, where fixing problems is in our DNA, it's hard to accept that possibility. When we began laying the groundwork for the Koch Institute, that calculus was suddenly altered. It was as if for all of us, cancer biologists, oncologists, engineers, and more, we're given a license and the means to think even more ambitiously. Essential to our success was the active engagement of our engineering colleagues, most notably Bob, Weinberg, uh, Bob Langer, who were excited to bring their talents and their special brand of creativity and join forces to overcome the problems of cancer. And so we reflected and asked, in order to address the limitations of conventional cancer treatment, why shouldn't we be able to target therapies that operate on the nanoscale and wipe out cancer cells while leaving healthy cells alone? In order to monitor the state of a patient's disease continuously, why can't we create implantable microsensors that can track cancer from moment to moment? To overcome what is usually the lethal phase of cancer, why can't we interfere with the genetic drivers of metastasis? To create new strategies to prevent cancer from developing in the first place, why can't we train our immune systems to fight cancer more effectively? By bringing diverse perspectives to the table, including importantly the broader clinical community as well as our partners in industry, recognizing that collectively we can do more than any of us could do working individually, we are intent on making an impact on the lives of those diagnosed with cancer 
in the very near term. This is a vision that I know you all share, most especially David Koch, who has not only been generous to this institute in material ways, but is also, as importantly, through his insights and vision and his infectious enthusiasm through every step in our evolution. David's support to MIT for the building, our research, faculty chairs, fellowships, and equipment have permanently altered our work in cancer and has transformed what was already a world-class resource into what aims to be the world's focal point for a new era in cancer research. Let me also welcome and thank David's wife, Julia, and welcome his brother, Charles, and his wife, Liz. Thank you for being here tonight to support your brother's mission to change the course of cancer in our lifetimes. I'd also like to acknowledge and offer a special note of gra gratitude to Jeff and Mary Kay Silverman for their support of the Koch Institute's communication and outreach programs, including their support of this wonderful set of dedication events. Indeed, many individuals have provided critical support for the Koch Institute and our research, too many for me to acknowledge each by name. However, I would be remiss if I did not specifically thank Kathy and Kurt Marble, Art and Linda Gelb, Chuck and Jen Johnson, and Tom Peterson for their extraordinary generosity. Chuck and Tom serve on the Koch Institute's Leadership Council, and many of the other members of the council are with us this evening. I'm very grateful to all of you for your extraordinary service and for your wisdom. Finally, any undertaking as complex as building our new facility and moving our labs across the MIT campus requires an incredible level of dedication and support. Our MIT facilities team deserves great credit in this regard, along with our faculty. As well, the members of my leadership team have done a wonderful job. Jackie Lees, Dane Wittrup, Robert Urban, Cindy Quentz. They've already begun to deliver on the mission of making the Koch Institute a new prototype for cross-organizational, solutions-focused partnerships. To Berry Construction, which met our challenge to complete this project ahead of schedule and under budget, a huge thank you from all of us. And of course, Harry Ellenswag and his team did a wonderful job in, de in, de in designing that fantastic building. I hope you all enjoyed the chance to preview the Koch Institute Public Galleries, as well as a chance to walk through the Swanson Biotechnology Center. The galleries reflect our desire not only to do important work, but also to inspire the next generation of problem solvers. Kudos to Jim Bieber and his co colleagues at Pentagram who designed that space. As well as to John Durant, director of the MIT Museum, and Alex Fiorentino for their hard work in bringing it together so effectively. Likewise, the Swanson Biotechnology Center is, crit is a critical resource for our researchers, as well as to investigators across the MIT campus and beyond. In closing, I invite you to come visit with us at any time following this opening, and to keep clo close tabs on our progress through our public materials and our updates. Thank you again for joining us and for your ongoing support of this vitally important work. We are truly humbled by and grateful for your help. Thank you. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce President Susan Hockfield. Literally since her arrival at MIT, Susan has not been just a stalwart supporter of expanding and enhancing cancer research at our institution, but in very real ways, her vision 
of the convergence of life science and engineering and technology as a cornerstone of the future at MI, of MIT has shaped what is now the Koch Institute. Susan, we are all grateful for your support and for your leadership. So that's uh, Tyler's and my first official handshake of the new era. Welcome, everybody. Uh, everyone keeps asking me how I am. I tell them I'm in an altered state tonight, so I can't report from the uh, back how I am. I am uh, just floating. Thank you all for joining us. This is an extraordinary evening for the Koch Institute, and it's an extraordinary evening for MIT. It's a great evening for the region, for the nation, and for the world. Um, Tyler, your leadership has been extraordinary. I want to welcome Dr. Varmus. Harold, where are you? Great to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, so many dear friends of MIT, welcome to MIT. Welcome to the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research. Now, tomorrow is our official dedication of this marvelous new facility. But in a very important sense, the magnificent building and the bold project of the Koch Institute are already dedicated by the people now inside it who every day are achieving something truly magnificent and fairly unusual. True interdisciplinary collaborations to find new ways to diagnose, treat, and prevent cancer. You know, in my own life as a scientist, I've encountered many groups and institutions that emphasize collaboration collaboration has become kind of a buzzword these days. When you're on the subway, there are signs about collaboration. But I can tell you that when researchers from different disciplines come together with different vocabularies and different approaches to problem solving, the reality often looks a lot more like parallel play, where each group really keeps to its own kind of study, with only occasionally peeking over the wall into the discipline next door. But under Tyler Jack's leadership, now reinforced by the brilliant design and phenomenal resources of this new building, something far more powerful and inspiring is going on here. The invention of a totally new approach to cancer research through truly conjoined work of scientists and engineers. In addition, the Koch Institute's links to this region's other world-class research programs and clinical centers has created the greatest and most promising concentration of talent in the fight against cancer. So this evening, I want to try to answer two questions very briefly. The first, how did we get here? And the second, where do we want to go? What do we hope to achieve? So how did we get here? You know, advancing a new frontier is always really about people. Six years ago, two extraordinary people began to form and excuse the biology analogy, but I am a biologist, and we are talking about biology tonight. But these two people came together to form the nucleus of this effort. One was Tyler Jacks, who's now the David H. Koch Professor of Biology, and has been a member of the MIT faculty since 1992. By any measure, Tyler counts as a star. As a scientist, he's been celebrated for his pioneering studies using path-breaking mouse models to understand the genetic events that contribute to the development of cancer. Tyler grew up in the heart of cancer research, in the trailblazing tradition of cancer research at MIT. Now, many of you know that in another sense, Tyler really did grow up at MIT because his father was on the MIT faculty. Tyler recognized that MIT's expertise in technology and biology, dual strengths, created an opportunity for an incredibly powerful multidisciplinary attack on cancer in very much the same way that MIT's legendary Rad Lab called on cross-disciplinary strengths to develop radar during World War II. And at the same time, David Koch, an MIT alumnus from a remarkable family of MIT alumni and a devoted friend of the Institute, was developing a complementary idea about a facility that would permit MIT to attack cancer with our full force 
and I cannot emphasize sufficiently the extent to which David participated in the genesis of this wonderful idea. <clears throat> David has a unique position as, a, as advisor and supporter of most of the major cancer research programs in the nation. So he has a rare perspective on cancer research. That enabled him to recognize MIT's unique potential to meld first-class engineering with first-class cancer biology. And he brought to life this amazing platform for collaboration with his tremendous and persistent generosity. So Tyler and David together formed the nucleus. Now, as any biologist will tell you, the nucleus directs both growth and metabolism. And coming together, Tyler and David most certainly did. Tyler grew an extraordinary and all-star faculty team, including the Koch Institute co-directors, professors Jacqueline Leese and Dane Wittrip, and featuring some of MIT's most distinguished scientific and engineering talent, including Bob Langer and Phil Sharp, both of them MIT Institute professors, and both of them winners of the National Medal of Science. Together, Tyler and his team grew the Koch Institute, now home to 27 faculty labs, almost evenly divided between scientists and engineers. And there are another 20 faculty who are affiliated with the Koch Institute whose laboratories are scattered across the MIT campus. So Tyler took care of the growth, and David took care of the metabolism. He urged us to construct a state-of-the-art building, but to construct it much faster than we had planned. Amazingly, with David's encouragement, this incredibly complex and research-intensive building was completed more than a month early and well under budget. As the idea grew, a group of exceptional people came on board with it, truly a dream team of supporters, and I'll be able to mention only a few. The National Cancer Institute, which has been a longtime champion of cancer research at MIT, saw the value of our approach from the beginning. Dr. John Niederhuber, then the director of the NCI, spoke at the groundbreaking of this building three years ago. And the current NCI director, Dr. Hild Varmus, honors us very much with his presence here today. We've had a remarkable group of donors led by Judy Swanson and Charles B. Johnson and the Koch Institute Leadership Council, who individually and together have provided funding for the Swanson Biotechnology Center, the Center for Nanotechnology Science, the Philip Alden Russell East Gallery, and the Koch Institute Public Galleries. They've also supported Frontier Research Fund funding and clinical investigators program. And they've helped us pay for the building and establish faculty chairs. And they've also urged other donors to become engaged as well. A dream team, indeed. <clears throat> so very briefly to my second question, having come so far, where do we hope to go? What do we hope to achieve? Our student newspaper, The Tech, yes, MIT does have a newspaper, uh, captured it nicely a few months ago with a comic strip. The comic strip showed the grand opening of the Koch Institute. It showed us here tonight, followed by a newspaper headline declaring, cure for cancer found. And then it ends with a sign, a new sign in front of the building that reads, future home of hair loss research institute. <laughs> now, ultimately, that's our goal not the hair loss research part. <laughs> but our goal is to put ourselves out of business. In effect, the pe in effect, the people at the Koch Institute are fighting cancer so that our children won't have to. As each of us knows personally from the suffering of family or friends, the 200 or more diseases that we call cancer have defied most human interventions. So why should we be hopeful of making progress when progress has eluded us for so long? Well, it's because we have the right team in the right place at the right moment in history. We begin, as I said, with the right team, our dream team, the talent and resources of the Koch Institute itself. 
At the same time, we sit right now and right here in the right place, encircled by world-class gems of scientific and engineering talent. The Broad, Whitehead, McGovern, and Pickhower Institutes. MIT's own departments of biology, chemical engineering, computer science and electrical engineering, physics, and more. And especially our Department of Biological Engineering, which blazed the trail in uniting the strengths of biology and engineering. Along with that, we've got great pharmaceutical innovators like Novartis, Genzyme, Pfizer, Sanofi Aventis, Vertex, and Biogen IDEC, and dozens, literally dozens of sm startup and small and medium-sized companies all within walking distance, within walking distance of where we sit tonight. The Koch Institute is the clasp that completes that necklace, and it sits in the great jewel box that is Greater Boston, with its renowned universities and teaching hospitals and its thriving life science cluster and irrepressible entrepreneurs. And this is the right time. We're riding the crest of a powerful wave in the history of science. Simply put, the story of the 21st century will be written in the language of the life sciences melded with the physical and engineering sciences. By uniting the strengths of these formerly separate fields, I believe we have unlimited potential to accelerate the quest for transformative outcomes for cancer patients. I can't think of any place better equipped to seize the opportunities of this moment than the Koch Institute at MIT. And I cannot express how proud I am to have had a chance to be part of this historic effort. I want to thank everyone here tonight for the role that each of you has played. And I invite you, as Tyler did, to join us for the adventures that lie ahead. Thank you very, very much.